A $400 video editing PC? It seems like clickbait, but trust me, it is a really affordable and powerful machine made from new and used parts. It has an 8-core CPU, 16GB of RAM, and a GDX 1060 with 6GB of VRAM. That means that you will be able to edit 1080p and 4K videos easily. Let's start with the CPU. The budget we have is really tight. That is why I decided to use an older but still powerful server processor. It has 8 cores, 16 threads and boosts up to even 3.8 GHz. We are saving a lot of money and getting really good performance. That's because it was made in 2011 and back then it was an insanely expensive and powerful CPU used in servers. Nowadays, there are more power efficient and even more powerful Xeon processors that causes the price of the older versions to go down. We are using that to our advantage and even though it is a little bit more power hungry, it still provides good performance. We are inserting the processor inside of the Atomita X79 motherboard. This company realized that the older Xeon CPUs are really cheap so they decided to make a motherboard that would be able to fit into a normal PC case and still has the LJ2011 socket that matches our CPU. The only downside to this motherboard is that it does not have a USB 3.0 port, at least the cheaper version does not have one. You can use a PCI USB 3.0 card if you really need a USB 3.0 port. Onto the motherboard, we also put in some RAM. We are saving money on the RAM just like with the CPU because the RAM we are going to use is specifically used in servers. That means that if we buy it older, used, but still in good condition, we can even afford 4 times 4 gigabytes, which is 16 gigabytes of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM. Remember about buying ECC RAM, which means that it is or was used in servers. Onto the CPU, we mount a CPU heatsink. Don't forget about the thermal paste in between those. I use the CPU cooler from a company called Silentium PC, but unfortunately, their products are only available in my country. In this case, I will count in the price of this similar looking SSY cooler because it will work perfectly fine. Also, when ordering the heatsink, remember about checking if it matches our socket, which is LJ2011. Next, we'll be putting the motherboard inside of the case. I use the case called Crux Astro, but it is another part that is only available in my country. I bought it for 139 zwar, which is around $32. We'll be powering our PC with a 500 watt power supply. I use this Colink power supply, but because I could not find it on Amazon, I'm counting in the price of this really similar EVGA PSU. For the storage, we'll use two drives, a 60GB SSD for the operating system and the most important apps, and a 1TB drive for footage and other documents or files. As you see, I'm mounting them to the bottom part of the case. After connecting all the necessary cables and doing some cable management, we can put in the GPU. For this build, I use the EVGA GDX 1060 with 6GB of VRAM. It will work perfectly well and it will stay cool. Remember that if you need more performance out of this card, you can easily overclock it, but to not take it to its limits. Now that I talked about all parts used for this PC, it is time for how much everything costs. The CPU cost me $19, the motherboard $93, the RAM $20, the heatsink another $20, the case $32, the PSU was $35, the storage was $10 for the HDD and $18 for the SSD and the GPU cost me $150. That means that we spent $397 without shipping. 
the PC is finished and you can finally install Windows and start doing your job, which is of course video editing. It is a really balanced setup and it will also perform nicely in games.